Dave, welcome back to another segment in our wood technology series. Thanks, Jim. Well, we've talked quite a bit about lumber sizing and origins and some of those things, how it's measured and how it's sold. I thought we'd take this segment up to a whole new level for most people and talk about board measure. Ah, very confusing. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. At Dunlumber, obviously, I've grown up around that, and I can share a little bit of our history uh, later in the segment. But I was really curious how you how you touch on that and approach that and teach that at the school. Well, it, you know, we do it for for buying your wood and wood products. And so what I do is I put up on the board, I've got one stack of sheet goods, okay, plywood, if you will. Okay. I've got another that's all regular, like some of these uh, two by sixes, two by fours, okay. dimensional lumber, okay. um, and nominally. And then I've got one stack of nothing but rough cut lumber. So when you think about it, trees don't grow as rectangles. We wish they did, okay? okay. But because they grow as circles, you're gonna have varying widths but they have to bundle it all together. And that general bundle is something on the order of a thousand board feet. And that's where the board foot comes in. Uh, my son-in-law was an exporter, a lumber exporter up in uh, BC. And he said, we're the only country that uses board foot. Everyone else has used the cubic meter. Oh, okay. And that makes sense. Um, but this is something, of course, my students have to get very comfortable with. And so what we do is we literally have pieces there. Um, these, I like, what you've done here is just given a decimal equivalent, they can multiply by the number of feet. So that really works well. And the standard for a board foot, of course, is one inch thick, not three quarter, um, 12 inches wide, not it's 11 and a quarter, but it is one foot long. Yeah. So we'll pretend that this is a rough board, one by 12 by 12, or 144 cubic inches. Yeah. And that would be one board foot. But of course, then you get different thicknesses and everything changes. Yeah. Yeah, if you walk into Dun Lumber, we've evolved to the point where hey, it's by the piece, it's by the foot, it's yep. by the carton. But we still do get into having to, to know this. If I call up a wholesaler and I need a special pattern stock of cladding, and he's saying, uh, oh yeah, that's a 5825 a thousand. I'm sure a yeah. lot of our people might still say, hey, could you give me that by the foot? And they're pretty kind about that. I think back when I was growing up in the business, if you would ask for that, they probably would have said, you know, figure it out yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so some of that. And it's interesting too, you know, there's so many proprietary patterns and things like that. But I think a lot of times if you had something, you know, it's like a half inch thick pattern stock and siding. And the, a lot of times they would say, hey, it's this price based on a, maybe it's a half buy, but it's based on a one buy count. So they'd sort of tell you how mm -hmm. to factor. And if they didn't give that extra little bit of information, you could totally price it wrong. Yes. You know, uh, you just you just referenced uh, figuring out for us, it's basically it's thickness times width divided by 12 for a 12 inch piece in our world. That's That was always the yep. easiest way for me to think about it. And you and I prepared a few things today. So uh, another trick for me was always, well, gosh, okay, a, a two by six is one board foot. A and one so by 12 is one, you know, a four by six is two, a four by 12 is four. And I think we even cut that up. So you can see there's, you know, four chunks of two by six in that. So that was always a way for me to do some basic things in my head, but yep. you always have to be ready to fall back on that formula or pull out your, you know, your app on your phone or something. So, yeah, the uh, issue that we find um, in for dimensional lumber, it's wonderful because it's already been sized. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, at granite, we are paying for Wayne now, which we never did, and where the bark intersects the edge of the board. But if I go to a hardwood supplier, I may find a board that literally comes down almost triangular. And then when they do the tally, they kind of average where that is. So the thickness times width times length divide by 12. Yeah, that, that can be a little more of an issue. And for my students going yeah. out into the trades, when they have to see this and they'll see things actually stamped on all these disparate boards. <clears throat> and it may be a chalk line that says 4.2 or 5.3. And then I say, well, that's the number of board feet. It's calc on that piece, yeah. but they're all individuals. Here, if I got a four before, well, I'm gonna buy a whole bunch of four before. So that multiplier just makes sense. It's yeah. easy to do. But what happens when you get a piece of rough lumber? So I just happen to have one here and I'm gonna give you the calculator. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> All right. I've got the Dave measure. Put on my speed, it's got big numbers. I like and this it. This is one beautiful piece of vertical grain fur. Holy cow. 
And of course the call out in our industry is always thickness with length. So in the thickness here, and the formula is thickness times width in inches times length in feet divided by 12. So I've got two inch and I've got eight and five eighths. We'll call that 8.625. Okay, I'm going to add to each of them. And then I've got 34 inches. Again. So Cutting we'll call that three, three this foot. This times three? Yeah. And we'll do an equals there. Divide by 12. 4.3125. Yep. Yeah. Or feet. Yeah. So, um, and for a student that's going uh, to a hardwood supplier with all different widths, they'll have to be armed with this. The cool thing is we, our carpentry instructor, Katie Chaplin, has developed an entire program, which hopefully we'll be able to show in this series on how to use a construction master calculator. Mm. And they have board foot built in. Yeah. So it's easy for someone to do it. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. We, uh, I'm embarrassed to even say it. I don't know how it's marked in our stores right now, but when I was managing at Linwood, we would sell S2S lumber, straight line, I guess cut straight line one edge, and we would have a tally stick, and yep. we would go to the narrowest part of the board, and they're typically eight feet long, so we would go to that narrowest part and calculate it, figuring that, you know, somebody, the rest of it, even though there's lumber there, it's kind of a ripping the way we looked at it, so we only marked it for Oh, say it was six inches to eight inches on an angle, we'd really do a six inch piece, eight feet long. And you what know, a that. wonderful thing. So, that, but it sounds like that's <laughs> not the way it is all the time. Well, if you got a piece of Paduke, that's not going to happen, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because they're trying to charge for every square inch or okay. cubic inch, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and again, it depends on the market too. You're right, if they have to secondarily rip it, we, we call the surface three sides or straight line, okay. you can just take that over to your table saw and rip it and you'll rip off that other portion yeah. with the assumption that you're gonna get two parallel edges. But in some cases, if you don't need the parallel uh, behavior, you could also make something, let me think of a live edge slab or something like oh, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and a lot of times they're kind of triangular, you go into a Starbucks and you can see yeah. these all over yeah. the place, but it's very, very trendy right now. Yeah. And so calculating the board footage mm -hmm. is challenging. Yeah, uh, sheet goods. Yeah. So that's a by the thousand also, but not Oh, this major, gets even more frustrating. This is by the thousand square feet. Yeah. So you'll see like a price that says M per M for meal en Francais. So per thousand square feet. So you get a price and someone, you call up and they say, yeah, 7361. Oh my God, what does that mean? Yeah. It's $7,361 for a thousand square feet. Yeah. Now, if you just take the 1,000 and put it's $7.36 for one square foot. Yeah. But then, how many square foot in the panel? Yeah. So we are all very um, used to a four foot by eight foot panel. <laughs> in the old days, we used to sell bigger. We used to sell five twelves and everything, but yeah. uh, we're used to a four by eight. We, yeah. to, and my students all think everything comes in four by eights until they get a piece of Baltic birch, which is a meter and a half squared, or roughly five foot by five foot. Yeah. Now you got 25 square feet yeah. versus 32 square feet. Sure. So these are the multipliers that everyone has to become much more familiar with. Well, and that was my biggest error over the years. Like say you're so used to selling four by eight panels all year long, and then you get a special order and some, oh, I need some, I need some four by 10 plain sawn rough for yeah. uh, siding for soffit. And I'd calc it out, I'd calc it out on 32 square feet instead of 40. And obviously you're gonna eat the margin and I'd have to go to my manager and hat in hand and say, sorry, we didn't make quite as much money on that sale today. So yeah. You know, that's something I ask my students, look, um, leave your ego at the door. You know, yeah. you need to ask because every retailer can do things a little differently. That's so true, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's so true. We've seen that over the years with especially different grades of decking in the cedar world. Yes, yeah, so we yeah. just come up, hey, we're going to call it patio grade. Well, there is no patio <laughs> grade, but you know, somebody says, ah, it's got a clear face, it's got one edge, it's limited knots, it's got a little, you know, wane on the back side. We're just going to call it that and we're going to price it at this, and that's what it is. We did a series similar to this with. Uh, Paul Mackey with the Western Red Cedar Lumber Association. Uh -huh. And we got, he did one on grades, which is great. Anybody listening to the segment should go look it up. But up here, you grew up with it. I grew up, you know, everybody talks, I want some, I want some TK or I want some STK product, right? <laughs> Thinking it's select, tight knot. Well, there is none. It's not in the grade book. So. <laughs> 
things like that are pretty funny. And a lot of it's usage too. You know, um, I, I remember uh, this early on, uh, everyone thinks that DVD. So what does it stand for? Everyone thinks it's digital video disc and it's okay. not, it never was. What happened is the compact disc couldn't hold enough information. So the CD then graduated to something that was a digital versatile disc. But since we put movies, audio and video on it, it became DVD digital video disc. And we do the same thing in some of our lumber. Fur, for example, it'll be CVG, and everyone thinks it's clear vertical grain. Yeah. It's not clear vertical, it's grade C yeah. vertical grain. Yeah. Um, so these terms, you really have to plumb the depths and you have yeah. to ask and, yeah. and, and not be afraid to ask. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad we did this, especially on this board major topic. I know this will be valuable content for our people, clients, and anybody watching the, the series. So thank you. Thank you.